Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So in the last video, we have seen around 10 questions related to API testing. And now we will just move forward with the 11th question. So if you have not seen the previous video, I will suggest to please go ahead and see the previous video. And then you can switch back to this video. All right. So let's go with the 11th question. What are the major challenges faced in API testing? Right. So see, whenever we're doing an API testing, we have to make sure the parameters which we are giving, it says parameter selection. So all the parameters which we are giving for testing are correct. The combination of the parameters should also be correct. Otherwise, we will get an error and we will not be able to make a call. OK, what are the call sequencing which we are doing with the API testing? So I have given example before that we have a login functionality and we have a registration functionality okay so if i want to check login after the registration i have to make a registration call before the login call so we need to make sure the sequencing is correct okay and once we get a output the output verification and validation so we have to make sure we are putting the proper validation of the output it can be on the status code it can be the headers on body which we are receiving it can be the the number of arguments which i am getting back all those things and uh, beside that we also have to make sure that uh, the values right the input values the body which we are providing we have to make sure we are giving that in a proper format maybe in the JSON format if we are reading into the files then we have to send the JSON files all those things so we have to make sure the input parameters are also correct okay now let's move to next question what are the testing methods that come under API testing so we can do the API testing under different levels right we can do it for unit testing we can do for integration testing. We can even do for functional testing, right? And uh, beside that, these are, you know, all the functional kind of a testing which we do. But there are some non-functional testing which we can also do, like load testing, usability, reliability, security testing also, okay? And we can automate some calls and uh, like, for example, if I need to, if I'm required to do some kind of a API testing before I do a GUI testing, I can do that also. All right. Now, the next question is about the API documentation. So what is API documentation? So whenever we are working on API, it should have some documentation through which we can refer that what are the different resources I can pull through these API and what are the different combinations I need to give and what are the different combinations I'm expecting when I'm getting a response back from the server. OK, so everything should be mentioned in the API documentation and we should go through it so that we can test our API properly. All right, number 14, what are API documentation templates? So there are many standard templates for API called Swagger, MyDot, Slate, FlatDoc, API Blueprint, RESTDoc, Web Service API specification. So these are some standard templates. OK, now let's talk, up, talk about the RESTful web services. So what are the RESTful web services? So mainly web services, we, you know, uh, like there are two kinds of web services. One is based on SOAP and one is based on REST. So what is SOAP? SOAP is Simple Object Access Protocol and uh, it is an XML based method to expose the web service. OK, so for testing SOAP, uh, SOAP web services, what we do, we use tools like SOAP UI, which I think most of people have been used. So we use the SOAP UI and what is REST? REST stands for Representation State Transfer. Okay, so it is nothing but an architectural style. Okay, it is not a protocol like SOAP because SOAP is a protocol and it is just an architectural style for developing web services over HTTP protocol. So REST is based over the HTTP protocol and it uses the HTTP method. Okay, to do some kind of action. All right. So the web services developed in REST style are referred to as RESTful web services. So all those web services which are using the methodology and the architectural style of REST, those are called the RESTful web services. Okay. So okay. So we have already done a read about that. Now, uh, whenever we are communicating in REST. The communication can happen two ways, like the, the format of the communication can be either in JSON or in XML or in HTML also, or it can be a plain text also. But JSON and uh, XML are the most common one which we use for the communication. OK, and uh, number 16, what is a resource in REST? 
all right so when we talk about rest we always talk about resources so what is a resource so rest architecture treat any content as resource which can be either a text file it can be an html page it can be images video or the dynamic business information so these all things are resource for rest so rest server give access to the resource and modify them whereas each resource is identified by a uri so you know we have a rest client like a postman okay so rest client make a request then it is a rest server who given access to any of the resources all right and uh, we can access it through a through a uri through a identification of the resource okay what are the core components of http request so let's see uh, the the elements which are there in http request so we know that there are some http method right like get post port delete head so these are the http method and there would be one URI and you also uh, will know that uh, there is a HTTP version because our rest are based over the HTTP protocol so there's a particular version attached with the HTTP on which version we are working so those is also important part of this request and with that some we also give headers if it's a post we always give headers right and uh, we always give body also if it's a post call or a put call okay what is URI and what is the main purpose of REST based service and what is format? So URI stand for the Uniform Resource Identifier. Okay, it is a string of character designed for unambiguous identification of resource. So whenever we give any, whenever we are calling something, uh, whether it's a get call or post call, we give some URL at the top. So that URL is called the URI. The purpose of URI is to locate a resource on the server hosting on the web service okay and this is the format so we have to give a protocol so we give http and then we give uh, a name of the website right like we have given localhost in the previous video which i have seen you where we have called uh, the resource and after that we give a resource type okay so this is a format of the uri now what is payload in restful web service so the payload is a data you you are interested in transporting this is differentiated from the thing that wrap the data for transport like https request response header authentication etc so all those things which you send through your service through your uh, call uh, all the data which you send you know is called payload okay the body which we send it's called payload okay simple all right so the last question for this video what is the upper limit for payload to pass in the post method okay so what is the limit for that so get method because get appends the data to the url so its size should not uh, should not be bigger than the url okay whenever we are sending the url we have to make sure that uri size is not more than the size allowed for the url but in the post we don't have any limit we can send as much data that we want but if we are sending a large data in one call in a post, then it will consume more bandwidth for us and the operation will be slow. Okay, so these are the these are the 10 questions which I am covering right now in this video. In previous video, I have covered 10 questions and in the next video, I will cover 10 more questions for you. And then we will finish up this, uh, you know, this exercise and this uh, series. All right. Thank you for watching.